Hello everybody, welcome back to The Connection. It has been a while since we have been here at The Connection, but we're back at The Connection desk and we are excited um, to be connecting with you guys again. So um, hopefully you didn't miss us too bad. I know we missed y'all. But uh, I want to talk about a subject that I know is uh, one of those subjects that when you mention it, and um, no, it's not patience. This is not a, a little sermon about patience, but it is about fasting. It is about fasting. And uh, I, I'll be right up front. I am not an expert in fasting. I have fasted in the past. Um, I am not an expert, as you can plainly see from the looks of me. I don't do a lot of fasting. But uh, but we need to. That's the whole point. We, we need to do fasting. We need to... Um, do these things that we know the Bible says are pleasing to the Lord. So I know if you're a first time uh, guest and this is the first time you've clicked into the show, welcome. If you enjoy um, the programs that we put out, if you enjoy our services on Sunday, Foothills Worship Center, as you can see, I've um, got the merch on here. If um, you like that, hit the, um, the bell, notification, thumbs up, all that good stuff that you know. If you like it on YouTube, go ahead and connect to it and subscribe to our channel and uh, become a part of the Foothills Worship Center family. So we'd love to have you. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about fasting and and what is fasting. We know that we need to do it. We know that these things that please the Lord is something that we need to dedicate our life to. It's something we really need to just uh, do with all of our heart. The Bible said that whatever your hands find to do, do with all of your might. And we're supposed to serve the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, body, and spirit. So we're supposed to give everything we have into it. So if we know that something pleases God, then, you know, why don't we do it? Why don't we do the things that please the Lord? So one of these things is fasting. And I, and I want to talk about this. So the question may be for some of you that are first time, getting back to that again, what is fasting? Fasting is simply a sacrifice. Now, there are many different types of fasting. And like I said, I'm not an expert on it. But if you really want some good information on fasting, uh, look up Jensen Franklin. Um, he has wrote some excellent books about fasting, and I've read several of his books. Um, the Fasting Edge is one that is phenomenal. Uh, if you want some good material to read, go go look up Jensen Franklin and his books on fasting. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I've done some research on fasting. I've done some fasting. Um, I'll tell you one thing, fasting is not. When you hear about these people, and this may offend some people, but when you hear about these people who say, well, I'm fasting Facebook for a week, or I'm fasting, we're having a technology fast um that's absolutely ridiculous absolutely in my opinion it may not be for some people i'm not addicted to, to uh technological things like that so i mean it's, it may be good for some people just to get off of it completely who knows but anyway fasting is typically going without food for a certain amount of days a certain amount a period of time or whatever it may be or abstaining from certain types of food that maybe you enjoy maybe um, you really, you're, you're a, a caffeine fanatic and you, you know, and you can fast caffeine for like a week. Say, I'm not going to drink any caffeine. Uh, you're going to have a big headache, but you're going to be pleasing to the Lord. Uh, so it's just different things like that, that you can fast. Um, all throughout the Bible, there are many illustrations in the old and the new Testament about fasting in the new Testament. Um, John the Baptist and his disciples fasted. The Pharisees fasted. You can find that information in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, Jesus, our great example, he fasted. You can find that in Matthew chapter 4. The Bible said he was led into the wilderness and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit. So we know that from, from what we read about Jesus and his results of his fasting is that it can, it can open up another door, another dimension, another anointing in your life and take you to a new level in the spirit. So, so yeah, is best fasting beneficial? Yes, both for body and your spirit, because in the natural fasting, if you fast a lot of times, you will restart or reset your metabolism. Yeah, you could have things, the Bible even speaks about fasting and, and the healing properties of fasting. So, you know, like I said, it's good for body, soul, mind, and spirit. In the books of Ezra, Ezra chapter 8, uh, when Ezra was leading a group of people out of Babylon to go back to Jerusalem, uh, the Bible said they fasted. They fasted for the welfare of their family. They fasted for safety. And, and so, you know, you can read that, Ezra chapter 8, Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah fasted, Nehemiah chapter 9, he fasted. In the book of Esther chapter 4, you'll find that she went for three days and three nights without food or water and fasted there in Psalms chapter 35. David talks about fasting himself to humble himself. Daniel chapter 9, 
um, also talks about um, fasting and how Daniel was searching for answers and he fasted and, and how the Lord answered those things. So we, if you read these chapters and read these scriptures, you'll find out that fasting is a very, very powerful thing. It can, it can change the dynamic of your church. It can change the dynamic of your family. It can change the atmosphere around you and just and bring you into an atmosphere that is conducive for the Spirit of God to move and flow. And it, it, anything that humbles us, anything that, that causes us to get our eyes off of us and get them on God is always going to benefit us in the spirit realm. So that's exciting to know that. But I want to read uh, Matthew chapter 6, you know, because... You know, like I said, when people talk about fasting, a lot of times, you know, people talk about they get grumpy after certain days of fasting. And of course you will. I mean, you're, you are yielding your body, which is your carnality. You're yielding it to God. And of course, you know, the old carnal man is going to rise up and it's just going to fight and fight and fight. Because the Bible says that our, our carnal man, our fleshly body or a fleshly mindset or our carnality is the enemy of God. So that's why we, you know, we have to get in the spirit. And, and the Bible says, if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of our flesh, which like I said, is the enemy of God. So, so when you think about that right there, I mean, that absolutely is like a very frightening thing to do to think that my carnal mindset is God's enemy. I mean, when we're a Christian, we don't want to think, you know, that we're an enemy of God. But if, I mean, you know, my goodness, that, that would be terrible. But to think about that, if I'm operating in carnality, I'm God's enemy. So, so to, to overcome our carnal nature and overcome these carnal attitudes, we fast. Because we fast, we submit ourselves to God and we put our flesh under subjection. So in Matthew chapter 6, I want, I want to read this to you. Um, you know, Jesus was giving his disciples some very good um, instruction here. And he said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, no, notice that because, you know, it's not a question of if you're going to, it's when you do. Do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Okay, if you're trying to get men's attention and you get it, then that's your reward. But you, when you fast, he said, anoint your head, wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward thee openly. So, so here Jesus is clearly talking about that when we fast, you know, we're not to appear like we're even fasting. In other words, the fast is not to draw attention to ourselves. The fast is to draw the attention of God. Notice that he said that when we fast like that and we're doing it in secret because nobody knows we're fasting because our attitude, our outward appearance, our the way we approach people, the things we say, the things we do, give no indication whatsoever to people that we're fasting. I, I don't know. We have a tendency when we fast to want people to know we're fasting. I mean, that if, if that's the case, Jesus said, there you go. You got your reward because someone's like, oh, you're being spiritual. You're fasting. So you got your reward. So, but no, we talked about our attitude and about, you know, not to appear to men be fasting because there's a God that sees everything. Nothing is hid in front of his eyes. And if we're doing this in secret, the Bible says God will reward us openly. So, you know, so that's something to keep in mind when you're fasting to have the right attitude. But I want to mention this real quick because I know I've been taking a little bit of time uh, talking about fasting, but our focus text is Isaiah chapter 58. And I want to read verses 1 through 7, and then I'll, I want to explain something because I think this is really cool. In Isaiah 58, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. In other words, they're being false before the Lord and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me the ordinances of justice. They take great delight in approaching God. And they say to God, why? Have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, this is what the Lord is responding, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. In other words, they're, they're not fasting for the right motives. They're, 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 first of all, not following the required fast. And secondly, their motives behind what they're fasting for is wrong. And we have to be careful of that too. What are you fasting for? Fasting is not to get stuff. Let me just make that clear. Fasting is not to get things from God. Fasting causes us to kill the flesh and draw closer to God. That's the whole purpose of a fast. 
You know, when you talk about your church fasting for a breakthrough, that's, that's a good thing because as a, as a church, we need to be in unity with one another. So if the whole church is fasting and we're, you know, doing our best to, to, to get in unity, that's one thing that's going to bless the church. The second thing is, you know, if we're doing it to draw close to God for the purpose of God pouring out revival on us, that's a good thing. But if we're just fasting to get stuff like, oh, I own a new car, so I think I'll, fast. you know, God doesn't pay any attention to that stuff. He said, because you fast to find pleasure, you exploit all your labors, you fast for strife and debate to hit and strike the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. And this is what the Lord said. Is it a fast that I have chosen? Certainly not. A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? He said, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now listen to this. To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. In verse 6, and I want to clarify something here. The Lord is talking to the Israelites because in, in the law of Moses, the Israelites were allowed to, to make slaves of other Israelites. And when I say make slaves of them, I want to clarify that point. In other words, if a man was struggling to pay his bills, he could hire himself out to another Israelite for a certain amount of years and he would become that man's slave and he would work and get money to pay off the stuff that he needed to pay off at his own house. He would work for that man. And, and, this, and if you were a single person or you were uh, an older person, had no family, you could make yourself what's called a love slave. You'd be a slave for life. So that, you know, that was the culture, the nature of the people back then. But listen to what he says in verse seven. I thought, now this is the whole point of what I'm talking about today. Because this was something that really struck my spirit. And I may not be saying anything new to anybody. I mean, this may be something that you already know, you're you're very much aware of and, and whatever. And if you do, that's excellent. But for somebody who's watching that doesn't, I, I just, I thought this was an excellent point. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and, hide, and not hide yourself from your own flesh. You know what the Lord is saying? He said, this is a type of fast that you share your bread with the hungry. Have you ever done homeless ministry? Have you ever uh, seen a soup kitchen in your town or in your city or a place that, you know, served the hungry? Or ha have you ever went out and served the hungry yourself? This is what the Lord is saying is a type of fast. This is the type of fast that you can do as an individual, as a church, as a youth group, as a prayer group, or, or whatever you may be. This is something that you can do that the Lord considers a fast. Isn't that amazing? I mean, matter of fact, I would only fast I want to do would be something that he would set for. So this is a fast that he has chosen. So this, this is absolutely amazing. And he said that you can share your bread with the hungry, that you can bring to your house the poor, I mean, think about it. You can find a poor family, take them out to eat. You can find somebody poor in your city or somebody poor in, in your town and be like, you know what? I know this family that's in need. Let's go buy them groceries. Let's go feed them. Let's go do something good for them. The Lord is considering this a type of fast. I mean, this is, this is phenomenal. And he says this, and you hide not yourself from your own flesh. In other words, if you know people in your family that are struggling, the Lord said, help them. He said, this is the fast that I have chosen. If you see somebody that's naked, of course, you know, Lord willing, we don't see anybody like that in our day and time going around like that. But it's talking about providing for the needs of people. This is a type of fast that God has chosen. Now, for some of you that are like, I don't like to, you know, sacrifice food. You know, this is a good alternative. No, that's not what he's saying. We still need to do those things. We still need to fast food because these are biblical fasts that are in the Bible. And when you do a Daniel's fast, I'm sorry, I may, I may argue with some of you on this point. The first fast that Daniel had was 10 days. It wasn't a 21-day fast. It was a 10-day fast. And he, of course, you can read what he ate. And then if you decide you want to do a Daniel's fast, then you could eat what he ate and do it for 10 days. But then there was a period of time later in Daniel, he did fast and pray for 21 days until an answer came. So there's two separate fasts in the book of Daniel, not just the one. So, but then in the get back to what I'm talking about. And he says, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. In other words, if you see family that are in need, and to me, that's absolutely amazing. Then this, this is a result of what he's saying. He said, then your light shall break forth as the morning. Your healing 
Anybody need healing in your body? Do something for the kingdom of God. There's healing in it. He said, then your light shall break forth. Your healing shall spring forth. Your righteousness shall go before you. In other words, your witness, your witness, there's going to be power and victory and the spirit of God working in your life that when you go out around people, they're going to feel something. They're going to know that God is with you. He said, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. In other words, God's going to protect you. God's going to go not only before you, but God's also going to protect you behind. He said, then you shall call and the Lord will answer and you shall cry. And he will say, here am I. I feel the Holy Ghost talking about this. I mean, this is absolutely amazing that I can give to the poor, I can feed the poor, I can clothe the poor, I can clothe people in my family, I can do these things, and the Bible says that my anointing will increase, my healing will increase, my witness will increase, and when I call upon the Lord, he is right there saying, yes, I hear you. I, he said, if you take away the yoke from your midst. In other words, get rid of those things in your life that are trying to yoke you to things that are only going to bring you to destruction. He said, and the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. In other words, watching what we say to people, how we treat people, what we say about people in the church. He said, and if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, that's talking about speaking the word of God over their life, ministering the word of God to them, speaking positive things, not negative things that have a negative effect, not only on the person we're speaking to, but also on us. I mean, remember the 10 spies, they spoke negatively about the, the land. Of, uh, in other words, they were not just talking negatively about the land. They were all talking negative about God, saying God can't give us this land. What happened? They died and everybody who believed them died. Only two people survived that whole thing, Caleb and Joshua, because they spoke positive. He said, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. Strengthen your bones. You'll be like a water garden. I'm talking about, my goodness, just blessing after blessing after blessing. And I'm, and I'm not going to read the rest of it because it's, it's uh, seven or eight more chapters here. But you can get what I'm saying. And I want you to do yourself a favor, read Isaiah chapter 58. And if, if you can't understand it in the King James, find you a translation you can understand it in. But my goodness, folks, this is absolutely, in my opinion, something that has changed my life and the life of my family. Because, and I, and I wanted to share this with you today because I feel like it is absolutely something that everybody, maybe some of you today are, are struggling with fasting because maybe physically, you're not able to fast. And maybe if the church calls a fast, you're unable. The devil has beat you down with condemnation. This is a fast you can do. This is something that people are struggling with three-day fast or a one-day fast or intermittent fasting or, or whatever type of fast maybe the church has been called to or whatever, you know, someone has told you you need to do. This is something right here, Isaiah chapter 58, feeding the poor, clothing those who don't have enough food, taking care of the homeless, taking care of people in your family that are, are less, uh, that are not as well off as you, or just helping somebody in general and ministering the word of God to them and speaking positive words into people's life is something that God considers a fast. And look, just read for yourself when, I'm, when this is over with, go get your Bible, read this, rejoice in this, accept this and say, God, yes, I'm going to do this. This is going to be a part. You can open up a ministry in your church. You can open up a ministry in your own life that can grow and grow and grow and just expand and be an absolute tremendous blessing to you and other people in a way that you can grow your church and get people to come to church is if you put your flesh under subjection, yield yourself to God, do these things that please the Lord, and try this. What can you lose? Nothing. A few loaves of bread, a few sandwiches, a few cans of soup. I mean, what have you got to lose? Absolutely nothing. And when you read the benefits of fasting, of what Isaiah chapter 58, like I said, there's a whole lot more. There's, a, there's a many, many more scriptures on fasting that you can look at and apply to your life. But this is one that I wanted to encourage people today. If you're struggling with fasting, in the typical normal fasting, you're going without food and water or whatever fast it, you know, maybe this is something that you can do and also something that you can open up a ministry to help less fortunate people. Because folks, 
me tell you something. We are blessed. We are absolutely blessed. Absolutely. And I want to encourage you today to do that. Let the Lord bless you today. Let the Lord touch your life. Let him minister to you today. I want to pray with you right now. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word. God, your word is so wonderful. Your word is so precious. Your word is so powerful. Lord, and I thank you for the revelatory nature of your word, that God, when you speak a word into our life, God, you said that it is seed that is planted in us, that seed that if we cultivate it and take care of it and fertilize it, God, and give it the things and the nutrients that it needs to live, it will grow into a tremendous blessing for us and for other people. So, Lord, I pray today as they're watching this program, God, that you would bless them, God, and encourage them to do these things that I was talking about today and to follow the word of God and to see the blessings of God flow in their life. And, Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for being a part of the connection. We love you. We appreciate you. And we will see you next time. God bless.